So we have a, a Molotov cocktail that comes out. It doesn't land in the cupola, but it hits the vehicle, engulfs it in flame. Hey, it's the Chief Bonnie with board games and RPGs, and we're coming back into the Evil Twilight 2000. This one will focus on Lafew. We left Lafew after they just did a run and gun and took back almost control of the breach that happened on the west end of the wall. Now, before I go any further, if you're enjoying the show, uh, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. The numbers have been picking up in terms of subscriptions based on the show, and that really helps get the word out. Thank you. I'll continue doing board game stuff and everything, but I really love how this solo RPG of Twilight 2000s is unfolding. And for those that are curious, I will do some more Into the Odd as well. That one was so fun, so weird with the Vikings and the little fellas that <laughs> I enjoy doing that one as well. But we will complete whatever's going on in season one of this first. So, where we left Lafew. Uh, Lafew was the Pim Jim uh, contractor we knew the least of. And it just so happened he ended up being the main guy along with the U.S. troops with him that took back the breach that happened in the far southwest corner of that western wall. Uh, however, there was a guy still up on the wall working a flashlight. And the whole reason there was a delay in the 150 person uh, breaching force is that they've got 50 per bus and three buses have just rolled up to this wall and the buses are designed to basically be their own ladder system. These folks can get up on the roof there. Some of them are already on the roof and just get right on the wall and, and come right over. And when we left you, we had Lafew and five troops with him. And they had just taken back that area again, though. That one marauder was still sitting there working his flashlight, giving them the signal on where to come in. Now, we're going to continue to kind of uh, use a faster dice rolling system with group on group. The problem here is that the few had sent his 50 off, and that 50 was trying to work its way back around in the dark. You can get lost, turned around, and all kinds of things, and they didn't even have night vision. Uh, so I will be checking, not on the first round here, but I will be checking to see if that 50, that other Humvee, ever shows up and comes in like the cavalry to assist. That being said, 5 on 150, not good. What I want to do is see, is there any, I could see Lafew and his group um, trying to engage the drivers of these buses as they come up. But these are armored buses. So I want to see, um, and the guy on the, the fence line or on the wall who's been signaling sees the buses coming. They're inbound. They've seen a signal. I think he's going to turn and engage these five U.S. forces uh, with Lafew. So I'm going to use a 12-sided uh, die and an 8-sided die for the U.S. troops. The one militia guy up on that wall is going to turn his attention first. He's now made connection. He's got him inbound. He turns and tries to get a shot off at um, uh, these U.S. troops in the few gets a one, so he does not get a hit. The question is that single shot. I think would distract from shooting at the buses that are inbound, and I think I'm going to give them a ten-sided die and an eight-sided die, kind of for the punishment of that guy suddenly engaging them so close. Uh, it's almost like they forgot about them. So do we get any hits on these bus drivers? If there's a hit, um, it's going to prevent that bus from getting right up on the wall. Now, the breach can still happen, but it's going to be very rapid um, if it pulls right up even with the wall. Ooh, we do have a hit. We have a single hit. So the way I read that is um, um, a bus driver is hit. And that bus just kind of grinds to a halt, um, maybe 50 yards shy of the wall. There's still two more coming in, but that one just kind of oh, and veers a little bit. Doesn't mean somebody can't take control of it and bring it up, or maybe they dump them out. We'll probably go to a yes, no question on that in a second. But 
Two more buses are still coming in and they're actually starting to pull up even with the wall as these five U.S. troops led by Lefeu are trying to engage what will end up being, if that other bus gets in, at least 100, if not 150 that are coming. So each bus has 10 uh, marauder like leaders inside and 40 knees nosy and militia. Um, there's going to be a second shot from the marauder guy with the light. He is focused. He gets a five. That is a miss. He does not get a hit. He needed a six. We weren't giving him a five on that. It's not like the CQB from the last episode. So the buses pull up. Man, I got to picture this. Um, the buses have some, you know, folks right on top. Um, armed and ready to just come right over the top of the wall. Um, I picture that uh, they've pulled up in a way most buses, of course, um, I'm, I think this is how Euro buses work as well. The door would be on the right hand side. I suppose depending on what the driving rules are in your area that can change. Whichever way we'll say the bus pulled up in a way that it could get flush with the wall without blocking its exit door. Not to mention most buses Sometimes they have a back door that lets out. Um, but we're going to immediately have troops that are on top of the bus, probably more actual marauders that can engage the U.S. troops, um, and um, some breachers that can even come over the top as everybody's coming out of the back. Not to mention our one guy here. So we're going to pick up, we now have targets aplenty. Targets aplenty. Before, is the driver of the bus that was taken out, has he been replaced by another driver? Um, I'm going to give this just a 50-50, but under a chaos factor of uh, 7, that's just a 75% chance. So 75 or less, 86. 86, no. That bus doesn't move again. Maybe they can't get the driver out. So those um, 50 um, troops, the 10 marauders and the 40 knees nosy and militia, they're emptying out 50 yards back. So that's just going to be a run. They're not going to be factored in on this particular combat at all, but they're on their way. We have targets of plenty. Targets of plenty. I'm going to give two 12 sided die. There is so much going on um, that I'm going to gather. I think all my tan six-sided die, which is six, and these militia are going to be engaging the U.S. troops with these six die. And the U.S. is going to be rolling two twelves, and I'm going to start tracking them down just in terms of hits. So we have two buses up. Um, I'm picturing uh, that means we've got 20 on the roof that are engaging and 80 that are moving on foot. For this very first round, nobody's coming up ladders or breaching that are emptying out. This is just a firefight between the, the marauders on the roof and the five U.S. troops that are holding the wall. Oh, I've got to see, does the 50 show up? But I'm going to say as the 50 failed to show up, and I'm going to say that it's very likely that it has failed to show up, which means I need a 90 or better. 34. So I want to see how this happens here first. Um, uh, six is only. Six is only. These guys got cover on the wall or the Humvee. Six is only will be hits on this. Come here. Corral. Corral. I've got not a single six on that. Not a single hit. So is the question, or is uh, the U.S. troops taking any of these militia out? Uh, yes. Um, it's one hit, but there's 20 militia. All right. I think it's no way that the, that the uh, 50 Humvee is showing up on this round. But that means I'd have to get a 35 or less. Ooh, 38, close, but no Humvee yet. So they're still rolling six. Still no hits there. No hits at all. They could be wearing these uh, U.S. troops down. Ooh, we got three hits. Three hits, an 11 and a 7. So we're at 16 on the roof that are still up and firing. But these two groups that have gotten out of the bus, I believe it's going to be um, very likely that there's still a couple ladders and they're going to be starting to come over the ladders. 
So under Chaos Factor 7, very likely, need a 95. Ooh, I got a 92. That was closer than I thought it was going to be. But yes, some of these um, uh, militia groups are starting to come over the wall. So I'm going to add an eight-sided die as I get positive rolls on that to the dice pool. And that will, as I get the other eight-sided die in, if I get more that keep coming over, I think we'll just stay on that. It's going to, I don't need to continue rolling. Once they're coming over, that's a flood that's just going to continue, continue, continue. So each round, I'm going to add a dice. And if I don't have an eight-sided dice, because I only have two, then I'm going to have a 10 and an eight and the six. And we'll see how this combat goes. So again, LaFuse Last Stand. Ooh, LaFuse Last Stand. Militia. No hits. We got fives and fours and a one. Do the U.S. troops do anything? They're still focusing on these marauders up on the roof. They're the ones engaging them in, in direct fire. We have one. So we're down to 15 up on the bus. And the flood continues. We get rid of a six-sided die. We bring in yet another eight-sided die. So here we go. Oh, does the Humvee show up? All right, I still don't think that Humvee showed up. Um, has it showed up? I think it's no way. I need a 35. 28. <laughs> the Humvee has arrived. Interesting. All right, we're going to factor that in a second. But first, this battle goes down, and then I'm going to have to think about this Humvee. Oh, oh hold on. That was a six, too. Hold on. Here's the roll. Uh, we have one hit, so we'll factor that in. What does the U.S. get? Woo, three hits. Goodness. We're down to 12 on the roof. But um, Lefeu is going to be number one. And then there's four other troops with him. So with this hit, um, I've got a six-sided die. One, two, three, four, or five. Four. We're down to just four U.S. troops. Lefeu will always be number one. We're going to replace um, one of these eight-sided dice with a ten-sided die, upping the chance. However, the 50 has arrived. Well, there's no doubt that the 50 is going to engage the guys on the roof. We'll just go with pure hits. I'm not going to roll any of the six-sided die for suppression. Two hits from the 50. We're down to just 11 guys on the roof. That 50 is joined in and is just starting to rock and roll on that. Whew, but we do have two buses. And um, you know what? Um, after this roll, that other bus that has disgorged their people, I'm going to add, um, we'll start at the bottom. I'm going to add another six-sided die. Let's just add that in now. That's the other bus. Those folks that had stopped have, are now running up as well. Um, so they've got the 50, but we've got whew, the fuse last stand. So first, all the knees nosians are firing. And again, all this is on the fuse group. Are there any hits? Oh boy. We have one six, another six, a six on this eight-sided and a six on this six. Ooh, and another six. Uh-oh. That's actually five sixes. Wow. Um, well, that's it. Um, holy moly. I picture basically, all right, how did this go? I think the few in them, this is all focused. And uh, one of these, because there's only four left, is going to even be focused on that 50. We'll have to see how that goes. That's the Humvee, though. So the swarm is just, there's just folks pouring up over this uh, wall. And with all the gunfire back and forth be between the marauders up on the roof of these two buses and the U.S. troops, the, the, the militia finally, they, they can see all these muzzle blasts. And you just have this overwhelming group of militia and marauders converge on that point with that roll all at once. It's like snap and it's over. 
I mean, it's there's this moving gun battle back and forth, and then everybody coming up over the wall. Maybe they even had some of their own ladders or whatever, and it's just and it's done. Um, uh, over. There is a hit to the Humvee as well. I want to see what is this. Is this somebody just shooting and hitting? Um, or is this uh, some kind of Molotov cocktail attack on this vehicle as it shows up? Uh, we'll do it. Ace is going to be like the Molotov side. And two will be, we'll just resolve a hit, a shot that hit. Ooh, Jack, we're on that, that side. So we have a uh, Molotov cocktail that comes out. It doesn't land in the cupola. But it hits the vehicle, engulfs it in flame. And I think um, it's bad enough that the troops, let's find out. <clears throat> let's do a fate die. Do the troops have to bail out of this Humvee? I'm just going to do it as 50-50. That's a 75% chance. It's on fire. They got a hit on it. Um, there's an overwhelming force of what is the equivalent with only... 11 left on the roof, um, but that doesn't count for, that's only 20 out of the group, so we still got like 130 um, or more coming through this one area. Ooh, 12. That is an extreme yes. Do they have to bail out of the vehicle? Extreme yes. Um, I think multiple cocktails uh, are on fire, hit the vehicle, and it's just boom, 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 and it's burning. And the guy in the cupola just gets out. He over out of the top says, we're on fire, go. And the, um, I think it was just one driver. Yeah, it was. I remember now. It's one driver that was in the vehicle and the, the, the guy up on the 50, and they bail. They bail and flee back toward the interior, back towards the woods. Um, uh, we'll have to see. Uh, I'm sure they probably grabbed, either they've got a sidearm on, on them or they hopefully took an M16, but who knows with that much fire. So what this means is there's no warning that's out here as well. There is 100% um, full breach going on in the west, the southwest portion, not to mention what was going on in the south. So we've got 139 broader militia groups pushing in through this breach. There's, there was only 100 U.S. troops. Now these militia are way less trained, but there was only 100 available inside the base total. <laughs> so we're dealing with a full breach on that side. The fuse run and gun it was working for a while, but... Uh, now it's up and it's over. The 50 showed up, but a bit too late and just got swamped and swarmed as well. Um, the, uh, the far southwest is gone. Um, so these troops will be pushing up and through. What's going to be interesting is if they move into the interior, the first buildings they're going to run into is the compound manned and defended by the farmers that showed up way back in episode four. They're gonna hit that farmhouse hard. But we also have to move to Yawn and the Marauder for Krieg, hitting the house for a different purpose. That will be our next episode. Thanks for joining in. Wow, um, I figured LeFew was gonna be in trouble here. Um, you never know how it's gonna work, but when 150 bad guys are coming and they got a means to get over quick, that dice roll, wow. I was like, holy moly, we hadn't had any at all, and then over. And that feels like how that should have gone. If you're enjoying the show, give it a thumb. Please don't forget to subscribe. It's a pleasure. I'm having a blast. See you guys.